work and learn. Meet light, meet max. Sakriya karagani mata my SLT app kate log winna. Work and learn. Meet light, meet max. Sakriya karagani mata my SLT app kate log winna. Vy kato no ukute ekka. Rasa upari my. Yes. Hari <laughs> masuloy. <laughs> tonight this sunday the 27th of november 2022 foresight litro gas lanka to limit gas supply until wednesday ahead of increased demand in the festive season breach of conduct ministry of education takes steps to remove students overstaying at universities lasting cure drug shortage in the country to be solved by december says minister of health kehli ramukwella From Ada Verna. This is Ada Verna First at 9 with Andrew Bernard. Live from Studio 24 in Colombo. A very good evening and welcome to Ada Verna 24's English News. Now in the top story for tonight, the Ministry of Education expects to present a new bill in Parliament that would require all university students ex- exceeding rather their stay in universities to complete degree programs. The Minister of Education Sushil Prem Jayanth said it is the responsibility of students to complete their degree programs and contribute to society as soon as it's complete. Some students enrolling for programs at state universities have been known to hold on to their student privileges even after failing to complete their intended degree programs within the stipulated period. Some students have even been known to have continued to reside at the hostel premises within the state universities. This situation causes issues such as providing accommodation for new students enrolling to state universities. As a result, the Ministry of Education has taken steps to draft a bill that would force university students who have failed to complete their degree programs within the required time out of the hostels. The bill is expected to be presented to Parliament. Traditionally, if a student is unable to sit for an examination due to a medical or personal reason, The university ensures to provide 50% of the same time to prepare and reset for the examination. However, with the new act that is expected to be introduced, all students who do not retake the exam during this time period and remain within university premises will be forced to leave. Meanwhile, Chairman of the University Grants Commission, Professor Sampa Tamarathunga, said that students are not entitled for hostel privileges after the due period of their selected degree program has elapsed. He went on to say that students that continue to stay in hostels after such time will be doing so through illegal methods. The chairman added that university students for example who have a total of four academic years are not allowed to represent their respective university at any inter-university sporting event or competition after this period. As such the Ministry of Education has taken steps to carry out a census regarding students overstaying at university hostels. අවුරුදු ගණන් විශ්වවිද්‍යාලෙ ඉන්න වෙලාවක් නැහැ අද හරියට ඉගෙන ගන්න ඇහැ. ඒ ආය බලන්නේ හැකි ඉක්මනින් විශ්වවිද්‍යාලෙන් එළියට එන්න. මොකද මේ රටේ මහ ජනතාවගේ මුදල් තමයි ඔය විදම් වෙන්නේ. සෑම සරස විශේෂයකටම. ඉතින් ඒක විශාල මුදලක් සාමාන්‍යයෙන් කලා වාණිජ පීඨයක නම් ලක්ෂ 5ක් උතර වෙනවා. වෛද්‍ය පීඨයක නම් ලක්ෂ 20ක් උතර වෙනවා සාමාන්‍යයෙන්. ආදැයින් ඉපදීමක් කරන්න නැහැ විශ්වවිද්‍යාල. ඒක නිසා විශ්වවිද්‍යාල ශිෂ්‍යන්ගේ පරමාර්ථය වෙනුවෙන් හැකි ඉක්මනින් පාඨමාලා අවසන් කළා සමාජයට පිවිසලා වගකීම බාර ගන්න. අවුරුදු 8ක් 10ක් විශ්වවිද්‍යාල ඉන්නවා කියන්නේ තව ළමයි 8 දෙනෙක් විතර අවස්ථා හිමි කළා. අනිත්‍යාගේ අයිතිවාසිකම් කතා කරන්න කලින් ඒ තමන්ට සමීපතම ඉන්න අයගේ අයිතිවාසිකම් කඩවීම ගැන කල්පනා කරන්න ඕනේ. Now Litro Gas Lanka Limited says that LP gas cylinders will be released to the market in limited quantities until next Wednesday. And the chairman of Litro Gas Lanka Limited Mudita Piri stated that the reason for this is the high demand during the festive season and the delay in the arrival of shipments that have been ordered to the island. However he said that several gas shipments are scheduled to arrive in the island by the 30th of November. The chairman added that gas distribution will be carried out as usual after the shipments undergo the unloading process. Further he pointed out that orders of 34000 metric tons of LP gas have been made for December. From there on shipments will continue to reach the Colombo port until January next year. 
Literal said while they do not expect a shortage in gas, the demand for gas has increased due to the festive season. As such, the Literal Gas Lanka Limited company has distributed 42,000 cylinders so far this month. Chairman of the company, Muthapiri, said that due to this, they are releasing cylinders with restrictions rather than a shortage. The leader of the opposition, Sajid Premadasa, said he had promised the cardinal in writing to clarify out and carry out the transparent domestic and international investigation into the Easter Sunday terror attacks. He further stated that the SJB will stand with the people if the government attempts to crack down on any protest in the future, since the president pointed out a no-tolerance policy towards future protests. The Samagijana Balavege held a public rally yesterday in Gampa with the participation of party leader Sajid Premadasa attending the event. Now, Minister of Health Kehliya Ramukpala stated that there is a possibility to provide some remedy for the shortage of medicines within the country before the end of December. The minister stated that foreign countries and international organizations have implemented a program to import medicines required for Sri Lanka. The minister expects the possibility of the prevailing medicine shortage to be addressed as soon as possible. Further, Minister Ramukpala claimed that the currently there is no shortage of essential life-saving medicines. The Buddhist chaplain to the British Armed Forces, Professor Sunil Kare Karavana, believes that the path forward for the country lies in its ability of the leaders to restore trust and credibility in the decisions and actions in the country's direction towards stability and normalcy that existed before the crisis. Speaking to Indivari Amwata on our current affairs program at Hyde Park on Other Dharana 24, Professor Kari Karavana stated that in restoring trust and credibility, the country would also be able to garner more inclusive support from Sri Lankans overseas and the youth and various other sectors to successfully maneuver out of the economic crisis. How do we convert that feeling of sorrow and that sentiment that our Sri Lankans living overseas have into a dollar inflow into the country? I said opportunity in adversity. And the real opportunity here is to reflect back and see where we have gone wrong. And the biggest issue is this word trust in Sri Lanka. One of the things that we have lost in our political, social, cultural areas is this, this word trust. We really don't seem to understand the significance of that. Sri Lanka, we made the first woman prime minister in this country, our literacy rate so high, all the positive things about Sri Lanka, the hospitality and, and all of that. But still for all, for us to fall into a situation like what we had last few months was really unexpected. We know Sri Lankans protest overseas also about what's happening here. How do we transform that protest into an actual contribution so that they will also feel part of the development and growth strategy in mm. Sri Lanka? My answer again is winning the trust and actually creating an, a credible image. And this is what we are really lacking. Unfortunately, past few decades, our politics and our ways we were dealing with the outside world has not been credible enough. It is so important for us to 
reflect back and see where we have gone wrong. And in my view, the way to actually regain that lost trust is to listen to each other. There is this key word dialogue. And I think we don't seem to understand the meaning of dialogue at all. It feels more like a monologue because where each person is speaking out and not hearing each other. And I think the recent uprising and all of this was an opportunity for us to listen to each other and respect each each other and in the military we have what we call six core values called C drills you know courage discipline integrity loyalty respect for others and selfless commitment some of these are so important for us to have some values and standards I think we should understand that we cannot fool all the people all the time the best ways I mean honesty is the best policy and I think we need to learn from the these situations and, and change our attitudes, our perceptions and how we go about doing our politics, our business, you know, this is time for reflection. You said opportunities in uh, adversity and you mentioned politicians as well. I'm not sure if uh, adversity is always an opportunity just for the politicians, but for the people of Sri Lanka, where they could also thrive and benefit out of these tough times. But how do we bring this change in attitude and patterns of thinking to benefit out of an adverse situation. That could be actually misinterpreted and misconstrued as in a negative way, like taking advantage of a situation. That is not what I really meant. What I really meant was, as we say, the old worldly vicissitudes, you know, gain and loss, fame and defame, happiness and sorrow. And when we are faced with these situations, we need to maintain our equilibrium, maintain our balance. And that is one aspect of it. The other aspect of it is actually transform and it is time for reflection. I cannot overemphasize the word reflection, contemplation, mindfulness, a very key word and where we really need to be mindful. You know, step outside of it and say where have we gone wrong? What can we do? What is the best course of action in this sort of a scenario? Rather than repeating the same old mistakes over and over again. No, people, the police rather say that at least 12 students have been injured and hospitalized following a clash between two groups of students of the Rune National College of Education. The clash took place after a group of final year teacher trainees had rushed into a hostel of the second year trainees and assaulted them. The 12 injured students have been admitted to the Karapitiya Teaching Hospital for treatment. Accordingly, the Akmimana police have initiated an investigation into the incident following a complaint made by the president of the Rohuna National College of Education. The chairman of Public Finance Committee, Dr. Harsha De Silva, has instructed officials of the ministries of finance and trade to calculate and release the proper price that eggs can be sold in consideration of the regulations under the Import and Export Control Act No. 1 of 1969 related to the import of poultry feed into the country. This matter was discussed at the Committee on Public Accounts held in Parliament recently under the chairmanship of MP Dr. Harsha De Silva. After a lengthy discussion, the regulations under the Import and Export Act No. 1 of 1969, published in the Extraordinary Gazettes, have also received the approval of the Committee on Public Finance. The committee further discussed the regulations under the case Casino Business rather Regulation Act No. 17 of 2010, where the members of the committee were in the opinion that it would be best to consider the approval after making it more effective for the development of the country. In your business news, the newly appointed president of the Apparel Exporters Association laments that the recent tax increments hurt the apparel industry's competitiveness, although it might be necessary to address the macroeconomic concerns in the local economy. He made these remarks addressing the 40th Annual General Meeting of the Apparel Exporters Association in Colombo, where he highlighted key areas in which the apparel sector needs support from the government and other institutions. So I would like to talk about the future. 23, we all are in a very
challenging position and our target remains the same 8 billion US dollars to get there we need a lot of support from many institutions number one thing we want is taxation at the moment for our industry to be competitive we need to offer a competitive price towards our customers so when 15% goes to 30%. I don't have to explain how it impacts our cost per minute. So we kindly request you to retain the dual rate concept for apparel, probably the BUI sector as well. And the next point is income tax. Income tax is going to be somewhere above 30%. So our knowledge workers are migrating now. And our industry is also facing the same. They are going to our competitive nations with the knowledge base we have created. As employers, we have invested a lot in them. We continue to invest on training. But if they migrate, they are not only taking our dollars and keeping it there, but also taking our competitive advantage, which is knowledge and innovation. Our sector is very efficient, but when we earn our salaries, when they are charged with 30 odd percent taxes, they are paying their part of their salary to pay some inefficient worker somewhere you know where. There we know there are so many people working there and inefficient. I don't have to mention the sector. Then number two point, free trade agreements and market support. Free trade agreements are again extremely important for us. For example, India, we have a quota for 8 million pieces. A pair of socks means two pieces. India, there is a huge market. So we urge your support and the government support to get it up to 500 million US dollars a quota in terms of value we can serve it then of course GSP plus coming in the future then UK DCTS Canada GSP plus China preferential country of origin rules we need to look at if we get that we will be competitive and we can go to the 8 billion target number three is labor reforms labor reforms are coming on the way his excellency the president mentioned about that in the budget speech it should be fair our biggest strength is our workforce. We want to protect our workforce. NLSE is working with the government of Sri Lanka. So we warmly welcome these good labor regulations where we can even bring some more investors to Sri Lanka. Number four, mandatory dollar conversion. Currently one month. But with the market coming down, the business have come down. November, December, we will have lesser than we expected. Next year, first quarter, lesser than we expected. So our business cycle will change. Sir. Therefore, make it two months, please. We all know that Sri Lanka need dollars. And apparel industry in 2020 and 2021 and even this year as an industry we helped to get dollar funding to bring in gas, diesel, petrol. Then there's a, this funny thing called this DO charges. We are, we are suffering with that. There is this uh, recent move towards the concept cost, cost recovery charge. It's a little volatile. So we don't know our cost of imports until it comes in. How can we do business like that? So that is something that we are very very uh, disturbed about. But we will certainly support the government of Sri Lanka to come out of this and we need your support also to come out of this. Now, according to the President's Media Division, a special commodity tax rate has been recommended to be reduced to and by the Food Policy Committee. Accordingly, this decision will increase the ability to buy big onions in the market, assisting in the reduction of the price of big onions. The national requirement for big onions is about 300 metric tons per annum of which 86% is fulfilled by imports, while 14% is sourced locally. According to the Department of Census and Statistics, retail prices of imported big onions varied between 290 to 390 rupees, and the price of local big onions varied between 340 and 400 rupees per kilogram during the third week of November. The government increased the applicable SCL on imported big onions from 10 rupees per kilogram to 50 kilograms from the 22nd of September onwards. Now, while the oil markets are witnessing severe fluctuations due to the repercussions of the pandemic, a slowing global economy and war in Ukraine, a senior Iraqi official stated that the decisions to be taken in December at the next OPEC Plus meeting will take into account the condition of the global oil market. Meanwhile, the Ukrainian president also said that the cap on Russian oil should be at $30 to $40 a barrel to add more pressure to the Russian economy. The statement came as the G7 countries are split over the exact limit of the price cap. 
Iraq's delegate to OPEC Plus stated that the OPEC Plus's October decision to reduce production by 2 million barrels per day had played an important role in stabilizing global markets, while also stating that the condition and the balance of the market will be taken into account at the next OPEC Plus meeting on the 4th of December in Vienna. He said that the cut hadn't reduced Iraq's exports. The delegate went on to state that Iraq's current production represents 11% of the group's total output of 43 million barrels per day, adding that Iraq expects the crude price range of at least $85 to $95 next year. Meanwhile, Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky said yesterday that the price for Russian seaborne oil should be capped between $30 and $40 per barrel, lower than the level that the group of seven nations have proposed. European Union governments seeking to curb Moscow's ability to fund the Ukraine war without causing an oil supply shock are split over a G7 push that the cap be set at $65 to $70 per barrel due to enter into force on the 5th of December. And that concludes tonight's edition of First to Nine. Join us again tomorrow at the same time for the very latest news. Until then, visit our website www.adhadarana.lk for more news. Have a pleasant evening. Good night. and information you can trust 24 hours a day, visit adhaderna.lk.